Hi, and welcome to the Wolfram System Modeler Virtual Conference. My name is Johan Brugod, and I'm the CEO of Wolfram MathCore. I have been involved in the modeling and simulation of dynamic systems since I took my master's degree at Linköpings University in Sweden. With the first presentation, I want to say a few initial words about the conference. The conference is divided into two main segments. The first one hour and 15 minutes will be spent on three presentations. First, a high-level presentation that I'm just about to give. Then two quick start courses, one focused on modeling and simulation and one on analysis and design. The second half is about the same length and will focus on new features from version 4. During both sessions, you will be able to ask questions over the chat and our experts will try to answer as many questions as possible either during the presentations through the chat or orally in between presentations. So let's get started with a look at the key concepts behind Wolfram System Modeler. The world of system modeling is huge and modeling can mean many different things. You might use pen and paper to draw a model of something, use some CAD tool or even a 3D printer, or you might be developing mathematical models of different kinds. For instance, using partial differential equations or differential algebraic equations. The method will depend on the type of system you are studying and the task in hand. In this course, we will be looking at how System Modeler is designed to model complex engineering systems from different applications, such as a fighter aircraft, an excavator, an industrial robot, a Lego Segway, or modeling of an influenza outbreak. Let me start by listing a few of the key challenges when dealing with these types of systems. As systems become more advanced, it is important to consider maintainability. A key aspect here is the ability to naturally mirror the system model, making it easy to identify uh, different subsystems such as motors, wheels, control unit, etc. for the LEGO Segway. This makes it easy not only to build, but also to maintain the model. Most systems today consist of components from several different engineering domains, such as mechanical, electrical and thermal. If a tool is great at modeling let's say, the electrical subsystem uh, of the fi uh, fighter aircraft, but not the hydraulic system, and how these two subsystems uh, depend on each other, it will be very complicated or even impossible to get a true picture of the system behavior. Furthermore, parts of the systems will be continuous and other discontinuous. And in order to develop the right fidelity, a model at the right fidelity, it is important to be able to mix these. Finally, once you have developed the model, you would probably want to use it for several different tasks. Studying bearing contact pressures for the excavator, designing a controller for the robot, or generating a report for the influenza epide epidemic. Okay, so let's look at the first challenge, how to build models uh, following real-life topology. To illustrate this, we will start by looking at an electric circuit. We will start by quickly looking at how this would be modeled using a traditional block or algorithm based modeling approach. The first step is to select inputs and outputs, in this case a selection of voltages and currents. Then set up the system of equations by describing the equation of each component and applying Kirchhoff's second and first law. Once we have all equations we can derive the outputs as functions of the inputs and outputs, and then use these equations to set up the block based model. This is a rather complicated procedure to derive a relatively simple model, and it does not follow real-life topology either. But you can of course apply it to other domains than electrical. If you compare this co uh, to the component or equation-based approach used in System Modeler, I would simply start by finding the corresponding components such as resistors, inductors, capacitors, among the built-in libraries, and then use drag and drop to compose the model. All the work of deriving and sorting equations is done by the tool, and as you can see, the model looks very similar to the initial drawing, so it's easy to recognize. There are several tools that can model an electrical circuit using real-life topology, but the interesting question is, what happens if your system is more complex, consisting of subsystems from different domains? 
If we study this model diagram, representing a model of a Cessna flap system, it consists of several subsystems, including the electrical system, as well as the flaps containing hydraulical and mechanical parts. All these different subsystems are modeled in the very same way as the electrical circuit, using drag and drop from ready-made components. In other words, just as with the block-based approach that we looked at to begin with, system or component-based approach allows us to combine models uh, from different domains. In fact, system order has been designed from the ground up uh, to allow easy integration between different subsystems, making it easier to develop and maintain multi-engineering models. As a consequence, the models developed will mimic real-life topology and behavior much better. As mentioned before, in the list of modeling challenges, another vital part of describing systems at the right fidelity is the ability to handle discontinuous as well as continuous behavior in the same model. Looking at this visualization of a trebuchet, we can see how the stone is thrown, then flies through the air before it starts to bounce on the ground. System model allows you to include both the continuous and discontinuous part in the same model, and in this case the flight has been modeled as a continuous behavior, while the bounces uh, have been modeled discontinuously. I mentioned uh, that the electric circuit and Cessna models uh, were both developed using ready-made components. An interesting question would be which types of components are included in System Modeler. In order to facilitate the modeling workflow, System Modeler comes loaded with components from several different domains, such as mechanical, thermal, electrical, and even block components. The fact that blocks uh, are included might surprise some, some considering the discussions regarding block-based versus component-based approach. But there is a very good reason to use block-based components uh, for some applications. The most obvious application being the design of control systems. The reason for this is that control systems are typically signal-based, meaning that they have a fixed direction of flow, just as the block components. Most other real-life systems do not have, behave this way. Take the motor representing, uh, representing the machine's library, Depending on how you connect it, it will be either act as a motor or generator. As you saw in the previous slide, there is a multitude of built-in libraries, but there is actually more to this than this. The Wolfram System Model Library Store provides additional libraries, free as well as paid. As an example, the hydraulic parts in the Cessna example uses the hydraulic library that you can download from the library store. New libraries are continuously added to the system or the library store. But what happens if you need to, a component that is not built in or available in the store? If you have Mathematica, you can type in equations in the Wolfram language and generate system or models from there, as in this example of a bouncing ball. You can also develop the models textually directly from system or using the Modelica language, defining your equations as well as connecting components such as in this example of bearing. Whether your models are built using components from the built-in or additional libraries, or programmed textually, or a combination thereof, you can easily save them into your own custom libraries to allow for easy reuse and drag and drop modeling. In this example, a user package called Printing Press, uh, including the previously mentioned bearing model, has been developed. Components from this library are then used together with components from other libraries to develop models for different printing systems. In this way, you build your, your models uh, hierarchically, step by step, make them, making them more advanced as you go. Once you have developed your model, you can easily simulate them in the simulation center. There is no need to set up any plot probes or anything like that, as all variables can be plotted with one click. For 3D mechanical systems, you will also get 3D visualizations automatically. And you can even attach CAD shapes in order to get nicer visualizations, as in this example of a Stuart platform. Plotting and visualization are probably the first two things you would like to do with the model. However, there are several a multitude of tasks that you might like to perform. Therefore, we have developed a tight integration to Mathematica, meaning that if you have both System Modeler and Mathematica, 
you can easily perform a range of different tasks, including design of controller for the LEGO Segway, studying how the engineering uh, eigenfrequencies of a motor depend on different parameters, running simulations in parallel to calibrate or optimize your system, and so on. The possibilities are unlimited. This freedom to work with many kinds of analysis and designs enables you to do much more with your model. So using System Modeler and Mathematica, you can accomplish a wide range of tasks in an integrated workflow. But of course, System Modeler is not a single island. Therefore, the ability to deploy and connect to other hardware and software is included in System Modeler. First, by a standard called uh, FMI, System Modeler connects to many other tools, including ANSYS Simplorer, NI Veristand, and IPG CarMaker. Furthermore, all models can be exported as royalty-free standalone executables that you can use for different purposes, including the development of simulators. You can also connect to a simulation using a TCB IP based interface and connect to simulations via a real time link from Mathematica, making it easy to connect to, for instance, input devices such as a gamepad. So, there are many built in ways for using System Modeler in workflows that include other software and hardware. Finally, being able to communicate your results is very important. Together with Mathematica, you can easily create reports as well as custom animations, as in this example of a satellite. The example uses a model uh, developed in System Modeler and Mathematica has been used to illustrate the results. At the left-hand side, you can see how the satellite orbits around the world, and at the bottom right, we see its position Super, superimposed over a map of the world. Above this map, different facts are listed, the altitude, uh, speed, as well as three closest cities at any given point in time. This in uh, entire interface uh, has been developed with a few lines of Wolfram language code from within Mathematica, using built-in data for cities and maps. In this way, the results of a model can easily be communicated to others than model creators, such as students and partners, making it easy to communicate your results. In this course, I have presented how System Modeler can be used not only to develop advanced multi-engineering models using drag and drop, but also how you can use these models for different tasks including simulation, analysis, design, and publication, all in one integrated workflow. Thanks for your attention.